Welcome to Homeschool Your Way. I'm your host, Jana Cook and Bookshark's Community Manager. This episode is part two of Homeschool Success. Last week, we heard from Jaylee Willis, and this week, we get the pleasure of hearing from her mom. Jaylee was insistent that we bring her mom on so that she could share her part of her journey, which helped lead Jaylee to her success. So I'm super excited to introduce Jennifer Willis. Jennifer, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I would love for you just to give a simple introduction of who you are and how long you've been homeschooling. Well, I have 11 children, um, six grandchildren. Um, my oldest is 30, which you met, Jaylee, and my youngest is 10. And I guess I've been homeschooling for 30 years. I um, got my degree in elementary ed. And so that was kind of my interest when I was going through college. I only taught for one year before I started having children at American Heritage down in Pleasant Grove. And, um, you know, that was a good experience, but really my teaching and stuff like that, that's been through children. As you came out of a public education mindset, were you yes. all, did you always have your eyes set on homeschooling or was that something that was around you in your community or was that something that you kind of pioneered in your area? Well, you know, my dad, he was one that kind of challenged the paradigm. And I think homeschoolers are that lot that they don't just go with what they always did. And he did it in the health field and he changed his eating habits. He got rid of a disease that was un incurable and his was more of a health journey. But then also my mom's side, my uncle, he was in the John Birch Society and there was also the proper role of government and all of that that was being in my family so my older brothers and sisters i'm the sixth out of seven children so some of them had experimented a little bit homeschooling wasn't new when i started but it was it wasn't as accepted as it is now like almost there's a lot of homeschoolers right now and so i just i have a little bit different view of homeschooling and that I don't think it is that I'm doing it at home. It's like if it's that I'm in charge and my, my husband and I are in charge, we're responsible for our children's education any more than I would take them to church and think a church is going to be responsible for teaching them about God. I'm responsible for that. And so I've done everything. My homeschooling has included like private schooling, um, homeschooling, like at home, charter schooling. I started a help start a charter school in our area, different online programs. It's included everything. And so whether my children are attending a public school or a private school, or I have them at home, I call all of that homeschooling because I was the one, mostly me, my husband too, but mostly me was the one that made those decisions for the children. And so, um, I don't know, that's, I just thought parents are, should be responsible. Like that's my number one responsibility and is being a mom and making sure that those children are taught and they get everything they need. And so I just, I just took that seriously. Well, it sounds like your family made learning a lifestyle, even in your statement that like you were responsible, regardless of the choice or how you chose to educate at the time. It, it's a it's a way of life. It isn't compartmentalized where you go here and I'm just going to let you learn what they tell you. And then, you know, or I'm going to teach this particular thing at home. It, it was all encompassing for you guys. And I think that is really part of the homeschool journey, the education journey for all of us is making decisions that are based on learning and love to learning, not just being educated with information. Yes. And I'll just give a little story to illustrate that because I love stories. Um, is, oh, let's see, he would be my number two son. So number six, like right in the middle. And it was a year and the kids are like, we really want to go to public school. We really want to go to public school. I'm like, okay, you guys. I mean, it's your education. We made that decision together. And so I rolled them in public school 
And about middle of the second trimester, he comes home and he's like, no, I think it was like two weeks away from the end. He's like, this is the biggest waste of time. I am not going back. This is a kid that had begged me to put him in. I'm like, I don't know if you guys are going to like it. I don't know if you're going to do well there. I don't know if it's going to be really for you. I wasn't pushing him to go in, but they wanted to do it. I'm like, well, if you want to have the experience, that's part of schooling. And so he comes in and says, that's just the biggest waste of time. I'm not going back. He's a freshman. And I'm like, well, don't you, maybe it's like two weeks to end a trimester. Like, don't you think maybe you should finish? It's like, nope, I'm not going back. And you got to know the kid. He's, he's not going to go back. And so I'm like, okay, I'll call the counselor. And we unenrolled him and he never went back. And instead he went on, he went and did an apprenticeship um, for foundations. Um, worked with a concrete contractor, and by the he, time he was 18, had a fully functional business of his own where he was top, one of the top contractors in the area for doing foundations. And so, you know, he's not like a Jaylee, where Jaylee is, um, you know, a professor, but yet he chose what he wanted to do, and instead of using his high school years to maybe do all the book work that some of the other kids might have done he went to trade school and he chose it and that's hard work lifting forms and putting in the concrete and all that that's hard work but that's i mean i could tell stories like that for every one of my children they are all so different and they've had so many different outcomes but they're all successful in what they chose to do so i just kind of helped them decide what they wanted and um more led uh what would you say guided them found out what they were interested in and guided them other than directed them and they all have you know one's an artist one's an electrician one's super into health and nutrition i mean they're just all so different yet fabulous i mean they and that's been fun being you know, a mechanic i mean and even the boys, I mean, I don't have one boy that's graduated from high school out of all of my boys and all of them are providing very well for their families because they're entrepreneurs, they have their own business, like they're in the construction industry and they do really well. And so it doesn't have to look like a, a, a certain mold. Jaylee was our oldest and she graduated high school, I think like a 4.0 or something like that at age 20. No, college at age 20, you know, graduated high school, I think it was 16 or something. I don't know. Jaylee could have, she might have told you, <laughs> but um, they're just really different. And so I used schooling to say, like, well, what do you want to do? You need to be doing something. What do you want to do? And then help them do that well. And I think that's the beauty of homeschooling. And it might include putting them in a um, correspondence course, or it might include putting them in a public school, or it might include early enrollment in college or in a trade school or whatever it might be, but it might not. And not having an idea like, oh, they just need to go through this mold. They get to help choose the mold that they want to be in. And so I've got 11 children with 11 outcomes and I'm not disappointed with one of them. That so. isn't a, it's amazing. And I'm so glad that you brought that up about success because it doesn't have to look a certain way. Success doesn't mean you graduated a homeschooler and they graduated college. Success is like you said, you have children who are successful in the areas that they chose to excel in. And I think one of the biggest differences I've seen is that school dictates some school curriculums, most brick and mortar dictate a certain path. And they're getting a little bit better. They're now opening up the doors for some trades, but they're still saying you have to have this. And sometimes kids will say, if I have to have that, then I'm not going to do it. But as homeschool families, we can say, okay, maybe you don't have to have that. Maybe we can work around that because we see their passion and we see that we want to guide them down a path of success of their choosing 
And I think it's so much more prevalent in homeschool families because of the flexibility in those choices. I know a lot of adult friends that I have, I say, well, what did you learn in high school? And they're like, I have no idea. I have no idea what I learned in high school. And my husband is a product of public schooling. And he's he, that's his answer. He took Spanish. He doesn't really know how to speak Spanish. He did all these things that he was told he had to do. And yet he really did not love education. He didn't love learning where I'm the opposite. I was homeschooled and then I did go into a trade school. And when I graduated from beauty school, I decided to go into college, but I made more money. And if you, depending on how you choose to measure success, right? I, I mean, I was able to support myself doing the trade school, but like Jaylee, I love the collegiate atmosphere. And so I really wanted to keep going, but for parents who maybe you're listening to this and are just starting out on their journey and they really are getting caught up in the, I have to, or there needs to be, or they're getting pressure from the outside of, because it's not looking traditional. Did you have any of that as you were going through the journey with your kids? Yeah. One of the questions you asked um, that you sent me was like, what would you do different with homeschooling? And I thought the one thing I would do different is I would just relax a little bit more. I'm relaxed now. You know, I've been doing this for 30 years. I've seen the results. I'm like, uh, Jaylee, she was my most eclectic child. I tried everything out on her. Um, number one child. And I'm just like, okay, I'll try this and I'll try this and I'll try this. And like, she still turned out great, even with all of my craziness. And so I think with homeschooling, sometimes you're like, we want to compare to someone that, like, oh, that one's doing so great there. And that one's doing so great there. And that one's doing so great there. And it's like, don't compare yourself or your children to anybody else. And don't have these expectations of it needs to look a certain way. Because that is the biggest hindrance. Like, follow what lights up for you. If something lights up for you and lights up for your children, like, do that. Like, there's like, a million things you can learn. There's not one right thing to learn. There's not one right program. There's not one right way to do it. It's just have fun, enjoy, and like explore with your children. And don't judge yourself, like relax. It's gonna turn out just fine. You do your best. And sometimes your best doesn't look very good to you or anybody else. But it's your best considering, I mean, like sometimes I was, I have 11 children. I got deathly ill with every single one of them. So you can imagine how many times I was laying in bed, can't even lift my head up, right? And so it's like, sometimes my best was not not a lot, but I did my best with my circumstances, loving my children, loving learning and deciding we're going to do this and just kept going. And, you know, sometimes it's like everyone's back in school for a little while. Mom is, and sometimes they're not. And it's back and forth. And some kids are and some kids aren't. And I have some kids homeschooling and some's going to the regular school. Like, it's crazy. Never was it the same thing twice. But just parents, it's okay. Like, do your best. Follow. Your children come from you. And they are part of you and you'll know exactly how to help them and it's not going to look like everybody else so don't use that to compare or you'll just spend too much time being down and beating yourself up and your house is a mess and doesn't look like you got anything done that day and it's just crazy and it's like that's okay that's just normal because you'll get you'll get it figured out if you just keep going and i wish i could have had that from the beginning so I didn't stress, but it's okay. I got it eventually. <laughs> well, in hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Like I'm, I was homeschooled. I, I am homeschooling my youngest still part time, and I still, in my eighth year, I still struggle with those feelings of oh, I'm not doing enough. She isn't doing what she's supposed to. People might judge me for the choices I'm making of how I'm letting her dictate like she is in an arts program so she's doing theater and music and some sometimes we don't get much academics done that week and I think well it's okay she's she's happy and she's exploring something that she loves and 
that science will always be there. I, I just, but had I had you and I been talking seven years ago, when I first started, I would have been like, nope, we get our work done. We're not going to be those people. <laughs> You're not going to be, you know, the ones that don't follow the plan that, that, you know, aren't going to get done every year. And I think that some of that does just come with experience. Like you said, if you could tell your younger self, like, just relax. But I feel like if we just keep telling parents, if we just keep letting, sharing our experiences and going, it's okay. I never graded my twins writing. I never wanted to discourage them from writing. I figured if they needed to go into technical writing, somebody else was going to let them know what they were doing wrong. And it would be a quick course correction. And they, they went into college English as freshmen in high school. And, and it wasn't because they're, you know, have, they're super smart, they're average kids, but they love to learn. And when they found out they, that they needed to do something differently, it wasn't devastating to them. They were like, Oh, I just did that wrong. Okay. So this is, how do I do it? Right. And that was the end of it. And one of my girls wrote a book and self-published. And I tell people like, I never scored their work. I didn't really care. Like I wanted them just to keep delving in and getting excited about it. And, you know, that's that's kind of crazy that you sit here and tell people like, they never really worry about if they were doing it wrong. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is don't worry about that your kids do it differently. Like I have some boys that are so gifted in like the construction, um, that you know mechanics those kind of things like just amazing like my 20 and 22 year old they just built a house by themselves um not much supervision <laughs> turned out great like a complete house and they just figured out how to do it they asked their dad some questions you know they kind of grew up with that they went to work part of their education they went to work a lot with dad but here at this age you're like we we just figured it out and it's like we figured out how to do this and we figured out how to do that. And it's like, they have an amazing, like full fledged house and they just figured it out. Like, but then if you ask them to do like the, what Jaylee's doing, well, all my kids are good at math, by the way, all my kids, it's just, uh, I we, heard that was from your husband. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm good at it. And my husband's fantastic at it. And so we play math. We have all these math games. It's just kind of like, We'll put out puzzles or whatever. And some of the in-laws come in and it's like, you guys are crazy. I don't know how that's entertaining, but we, so the whole family's good at math, but you know, some of them are better at English than others. Um, my two younger ones, they are amazing at reading. I mean, when they were five years old, they were reading faster than I was. They're really good at that. The boys might be really good at this. You know, I have a few that were dancers and music and all of that. I told you I've got the artists. I mean, they're all doing different things, not the same thing, but they're good at what they've chosen to do. Some of one of my boys, they put into dance and he's like, he has two left feet. And he's like, I never want to go back. And the other one could, you know, doing the cabarets and won a BYU competition for his dancing. You know, I mean, it's just, they just are so different and they're so unique. And I think to appreciate that, not to think your kids, your kids might not be good at science. They might not be good at math. They might not be good at English, but they're good at something. And if you'll bring that out of them, um, they'll get everything they need for life and the stuff that they don't. Some of the stuff you learn in high school, you don't even need in life. To tell you the honest truth, you don't, my husband got his master's degree and I got my bachelor's degree. And the one thing I learned from that is a degree doesn't mean anything unless it, you want it for something. It doesn't mean you're smarter. It doesn't mean you're brighter. It doesn't mean you're more capable. It doesn't mean you're going to be more successful. It's just something you chose to do. But if you can learn for a lifetime and be excited about it and not get out of high school and says, I'm never learning again. That was the most torturous thing that's ever happened to me in my life. The most boring, awful thing. But then says like, you know, I want to learn about this and I want to learn about this and I want to learn about this. And like your whole lifetime is that you're going to be really smart time you end your life, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. I want to go back to something that you said was find what you, in the beginning you said light, which I really, I liked that illustration. What lights you up? What gets you excited? But as a mom of 11, 
what specific things can you tell parents to look for to help their children figure out what makes them happy? I mean, like you, you kind of said you put both of them into dance and one of them liked it and one of them didn't like it. Right. So you have like those common things, but I know each child is different, but are there some common threads that you saw that was like uh, specifically, how did you recognize what they were passionate about? If you're with your children, you just notice I mean, if you have little boys that are outside digging trenches and figuring out how to put electrical in their little clubhouse and building a house on stilts and have little rock gardens and stuff like that, and you get them some concrete and they mix that up and, you know, four wheeling or dirt biking or just, and then he took apart his whole dirt bike and rebuilt it. And so helped him most of the time my kids earned even the money to do some of these things all of them that took piano lessons paid for their own piano lessons sometimes they'd pay half if they were young enough they paid for their own dance lessons they paid for their own motorcycle parts so because that was important to me too it's like well i never had troubles getting my kids to practice piano because <laughs> guess what they paid for the lesson and then they practice and they practice hours and hours and hours I didn't have problems if they were going to get the most out of their dance lessons because they were paying for the lessons. So I would help like get them there or the boy that took his dirt bike apart and rebuilt the dirt bike. I'm like, he's got a gift with doing that. And so we were constantly going online and buying different parts and stuff like that. And most of them, he even paid for the parts. And so, and they had, they got jobs. They most of them worked at the dairy, the local dairy, our neighbor, and milked cows and got up at four or five in the morning and earned their money and things like that. So it's just like I just paid attention to what they liked. I have one daughter. She's she's an illustrator and an artist. I mean, and it's like she just spent all this time researching the videos and figuring out how to do it. And she's a beautiful artist. I can draw stick figures. I didn't teach her that. She learned it, and. I didn't even have the skills to teach art, but yet she's got this beautiful skill. Now she's got a little program and she's teaching her younger sisters and gives them lessons and stuff like that on how to do it. So I think just pay attention to what your kids do. What do they play? Because if you can turn what they play into what they do, um, I think it's just natural. I, I don't know. Just. I, I don't really have a good answer because I didn't think much about that, but I think I just watch them. Even my youngest, she is so social, makes friends so well, always planning these parties. And I'm like, you know, you could, people make a living planning parties. She's like, who wouldn't want to plan their own party? I can't imagine someone not wanting to plan their own party because she has her party plan like, 11 months in advance and i'm like i don't usually give this many parties for kids i got 11 kids we don't have this many parties but she's got it all planned knows every and i'm like you know what i wouldn't be surprised if she is not some wedding party planner and loving every minute of it and you know like that's a profession yeah, because yeah. it's what she loves to do and she is always planning um she's having a play date with her friend right now and when her friend leaves, she's already planning all the activities, all the things, writing out lists, creating stuff to play with her friend. I'm like, I think she's, I think she's a party planner and I am not a party planner. So I just watch them. I don't I, watch them. They'll, they'll naturally emerge. I think that is a great answer. I feel like a lot of parents who are newer to homeschool haven't spent that same amount of time with their children. So I think naturally there is this fear. I don't I don't know how my kids learn. I don't know what really excites my kids when you are in a you know a busy nose to the grind kind of schedule and then you you course correct and you want to be homeschool and it opens up a whole new world where you do have more time and you do get to see what excites your children, but it takes time. And so I think that for a parent who might be listening to this going, well, that she's making it sound easy, but I don't think it's that easy. I, I think giving it time, just giving space, yeah. space. kind of get back into that, you know, uh, it's a lifestyle. 
Yeah, and you got to realize I've been doing this for 30 years. It's been like a whole little bring it down to 30 years. And it's like 30 years of experience of being with your children every day and watching them and then seeing, oh, they acted like this as a child. And now as an adult, this is what they turned out. Like I'm getting a hindsight. It's like, oh, I didn't know that they were really good at that. What I'm interested to know is as you were, because you did talk about doing different things. You started a, you started a chart, helped start a charter school. Jaylee talked about a co-op that you were in, that some of the moms took like the different subjects. Do you feel like you had a pretty strong community from the get-go or was that something that you had to build up around you in homeschooling as you progressed in your years? You know, I always had friends that were doing something similar. So I think I had strong support. I didn't feel like, hey, nobody understands me. I'm the only one doing this. There was also plenty of opposition. And I just didn't talk to those people. When I am going through something that I'm not quite sure about, I don't talk to the naysayers. Once I'm confident, I don't care about, I'll talk to anybody. But when I'm not confident, I don't talk to them. We definitely have to follow that intuition that we have and know yourself. If if it doesn't bring you joy, don't do it. Even though, you know, yes, we do kind of stretch for our, our children and, and kind of get them to, you know, they do things maybe that we don't enjoy, but we have to, you know, make sure that they have availability to do those things. But I'd say that's a small percentage. As a parent, I just, I feel like if it didn't bring me joy, if I wasn't going to you know, have a good attitude about it. I had to decide either I was going to change my attitude about it or we just couldn't do it because I didn't want to ruin that for them either. So I imagine with all the different personalities that you had running around, yes. you uh, you had to adapt and and really kind of make that work. And, and, you know, if it was not going places then it just wasn't not going places, but it doesn't seem like it affected your children negatively in any way. <laughs> Well, no, and and really, they had a they had a dream life because we lived out in a beautiful area on eighty acres. In fact, now we rented out like a, a VRBO property, and people come. It's like this is like a dreamland, you know. It's like ten acres of landscaped out in the middle of a farm, and they just could run, they could play, they could create, they could build. We always had a big garden going, and I did take them on day trips. I didn't take them on long like ten day trips, but I did take them. You know, we'd would go on an outing and we'd go on hikes and we'd go do different things like that. But we had a lot of stuff going on at home and they taught each other too. That's an important part with homeschooling is sometimes it's like, you guys need to start asking each other questions. You need to ask and help each other out. Like mom can't go around and doing all of that, but the kids, I mean, they're all very good workers. Cause that was important in our family. Like everyone knows how to work. Everyone helped learn how to do this and learn how to do that. And whether it was cooking or sewing or gardening or building or art or just, and they had a lot of just free time to play. Another thing that's important is we didn't have a lot of media. We had one night a week was a movie night on Friday night. And that was the day I was like, <sighs> you know, I can relax because I, I like, okay, everyone's down there just like watching the movie because they don't get to watch it all week long. And we'd have pizza night and stuff like that. But that was a big thing also, children, because they get very creative when they're not in front of a screen. And so it's like a whole way of life. It's not just like, one, you can't just take one little piece of like what we're talking about. It's a whole lifestyle. And it's like, they, they're super creative kids. And they would, you know, uh, everything. I mean, they just, they knew how to play. They knew how to create. They knew how to do things. And they all have an entrepreneurial spirit. I'm like, well, we can do a business about this and we can do this and we can do this. And I think Jaylee, she's got all of her ideas of what she can do, but they're all like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, they, they had a good lifestyle and it was good for that many children to be out in the country because they could run and play and explore which was wonderful. So, yeah, there has been a real resurgence 
toward letting kids play more, being outside. I had done a podcast with um, the creator of A Thousand Hours Outdoors, and she her platform is just really to get families to see that they need to get outside. They need to be letting their kids get bored in the beginning so that they that creativity can come back. And another thing is when they work, like this is really important. I don't require my children to learn something in specific, um, something specifically. Learning, I think, is a privilege. So it's like, I am not going to require you to learn something. I'm going to require you to do something, but not, I'm not going to force anything down your throat. Like, even like with piano, I had to, I'm, I'm very good at playing the piano, but I had to practice when I was little. And I'm like, I didn't like that feeling. So I'm like, I'm not doing that with my children. I'm not forcing, and I'm not saying anything bad about my parents. I'm just saying, I wasn't going to do that. If you're going to learn, it's going to be your privilege. But working wasn't, wasn't, that was not optional. Everybody has to do their chores. And I found that when children have a good work ethic and they're part of just making things work, I'm like, we don't eat, we don't operate. Nothing happens unless somebody's working dad's working mom's working like that's a natural law we don't eat unless we work and that's actually how we did it you don't have breakfast until you got your job done so i didn't have to work everyone got hungry and everyone worked and it was just part of our natural way of going and um because they worked they played really well they created really well and i just think that's interesting children that only get to play it's like, oh, just go play, just go play, just go play. They don't play the same way that children that work. It's like their free time to my children meant something. That was kind of hindsight, figuring that out and watching children that they need to have responsibility, real responsibility to help the family because then they feel good about themselves. There's their, You don't have to worry about self-esteem when you know you're helpful. We don't even need to talk about self-esteem. They just know that they're valuable because they're doing something valuable. Yeah. So yeah. that's a side thing. No, I think that's a great, I mean, if we were going to say like, what's your hack? I think that's, I think you just nailed it because there's so many times that I see parents who are working and choosing to homeschool and keeping up with the activities and they're drowning because they're not seeing the value of having their children help them. And they feel like it's their responsibility because they're the adult, they're the parent. And there's so many things that you can partner with your children to do in, in your house with, you know, with cooking with, I mean, it's just all of it. Like I constantly tell my girls, like, you only get what you have because of what we all do. Like it just, like you said, it doesn't, it's not naturally going to appear. So yeah, you need to, if I cook, then you do need to clean it up because you partook in the work that I did. Now you have to do your work. And it, it does definitely, I've seen it in my own life personally. And now with my children, all three of them work outside of the home part-time and it, they really do have a sense of worth and we're proud that they are recognizing that they're producing members of society, right? They, they're part of a, of a, a, a system that works when we all work in the system. I listen to your own heart. You know, your children and you can follow your light, your inspiration, your guide, and probably going to do something very different than what I did. You have different circumstances, different personalities, different children. And if you're having fun, you can't go wrong. Like you're really having joy and you're having fun. Like, I think that's the number one thing. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. I mean, you're not going to enjoy it every day. Some days you're just going to be dead tired, but enjoy, have fun. Cause homeschooling is fun. Like you, you get the whole world in front of you and the way things are now, like you can, it wasn't like that when I was there, you can have so much at your fingertips, so many things that are so easy to learn that weren't there 30 years ago. Yeah. I mean, Google was born the same year I was married. I mean, that sounds weird, but there was no Google when I got married. And now it's like, my kids like, there was no Google. <laughs> yeah, there's no Google. I Google like, I remember, everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, I'm thinking 1991, Google was married. When I was married, Google was born. So we have a lot, we have a lot at our disposal, which makes homeschooling even easier.
So, yeah. Yeah. Well, Jennifer, I just want to thank you for taking the time to come on and talk with me and just encourage our listeners that their choice is the right choice for them and their family. And really you can do it anyway. And is, and to put joy in it, because that is really the goal is having joy being with your family and then loving learning. So thank you so much. I am just thrilled that you said yes. And that Jaylee just insisted that we get you on here. So thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks for what you're doing and encouraging homeschoolers. And it really is, I think the best thing you can put your investment into is your family. Because when I look back, it's like, that's my treasure, right? Nothing else, not the size of the house, not money, not professions, not professional acclaim. It's they are the best treasure I have. So thank you. Well, that is beautifully said. I want to thank you guys for listening. Until next time. Bye-bye.